This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Bruchem Abam. It's amazing. Even though we're in the three weeks now, it's amazing how many Italian gedolim are relevant to the Tukufa of the year that we're uh, happen to be in. Um, of course, we know Minag Ashkenaz is we don't shave or take haircuts throughout the period of the Bein Hamitzarim. And uh, this brings us to the uh, important topic of beards. Should a Jew have a beard? Is a beard a uh, Jewish look? Is it, a, is it an obligation? Is it a preference? Is it a minhag? Or is it discretionary? Or is it really not that important at all? Well, one of the fiercest dis- disputes in Jewish history was the raging machlekes between Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz and Rabbi Yaakov Emden. Of course, we know that uh, not only was it a machlekes between uh, those two great Gedele Yisrael, but uh, there were many Rabbanim involved on both sides. But one thing they both agreed on was they both agreed on the greatness of the individual we're going to speak about tonight, and that is the Ramah Mipano. Rav Menachem, Rabbeinu Menachem Azaria of Pano. Somebody even uh, was afraid. Rabbi, you know, you speak about the Ramah Mipano so much, he may even be surpassing the Chida in terms of your personal popularity. So I just want to assure you that the Chida appears on the Mar Mekomis tonight at least five times. So I don't think, uh, you know, it might be a tight race, but certainly, you know, Kula Mahuvim, they're, they're all very beloved. Okay, so Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz uh, wrote a Sefer on Chosh Mishmad called Kresi Uplesi, which is a very complex Sefer. And in the Kresi Uplesi, Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz wrote a chilek of it called Beis HaSafek. And Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz discusses a very interesting uh, topic, something maybe you'll remember back to your yeshiva days, if you, if you ever had the privilege to learn Mesech Tekzubais, on Daf Tes in Mesech Tekzubais, the, uh, the Gemara talks about the following dilemma. A person gets married, and he realizes uh, the woman is not a basula. You know, she's not as advertised. So now the problem is, if she was mezana while she was married to you, in other words, after Erosin, then you're not to live with her. So the Gemara says, if somebody married a woman, Umatza Pesach Pasuach, he found that she's not a basula, he's allowed to continue living with her, based on the heter called Svexveka. What's a Svexveka? We know Suffolk Dairais al If you're in doubt whether you're permitted or prohibited to do something, when it comes to an Isr Dairais, so it's Asr. So one would expect, since you're not sure if this one woman was Mazana while she was married to you, you would expect that she, in fact, is Asr to you. But no, the Gemara says she is Mutter to you because of Svek Sveka. Listen carefully. What's a Svek Sveka? Maybe she was Mazana when she was married to you, maybe it was before. And even if she was Mazana when she was married to you, Maybe it was ba'inas. Maybe she was coerced and it wasn't out of uh, her own volition. And if a woman is mazana ba'inas, a woman was uh, coerced, then she's mutara slabala, she's mutter to her husband. So it's a svek sveka. Maybe tachtav, maybe lav tachtav. And even if it was tachtav, maybe ba'inas, maybe baratzay. So the question is, whenever you use a heter of a svek sveka, does a svek sveka have to be mishapechas? You ever hear that, that concept? Mesapechas means you have two possibilities why something should be mutter. Either A, and even if not A, maybe B. Do you need to be able to say over the sex feka, maybe A, and even if not A, B? And do you need to be able to say it the other way also? Maybe B, and even if not B, maybe A. Do you have to be able to say it over both ways? For example, the classic case, maybe it was tachtav, maybe it was lav tachtav, and even if it was tachtav, maybe v'oynes, and maybe v'ratzayn, you could say it the other way as well. Was it oynes, and was it ratzayn? Or even if it was ratzayn, maybe it was lav tachtav. That's what it means, a svek seka tvi mesapechas. So there is the opinion of the rivash, who, who testifies and attests, in the name of the kadmoinim, that it does have to be mishapech. When you utilize the heter of Svek you have to be able to say it both ways. On the other hand, says Rabbi Yonis and the opinion of the Maharit, he brings slew of Rayas from Shas and Poiskim, that a Svek Sveka does not have to be Mesapechas. Even if you can only say it one way, it's still a valid Svek Sveka. And, he, and the Pri Chadash as well, also, brings many Rayas that a Svek Sveka does not have to be Mesapechas. 
comes the Ramah Mipano, Ramah Mazar Mipano, who, by the way, was not only one of the greatest Mekubalim, but he was a great Halachist. He wrote on the Rif, he wrote a Kitzer of the Rif. We know in the back of every Gemara you have the abridged version of the, uh, you have the Rif. The Rif basically collects from the Gemara all the Halachist Psukais. The Ramah Mipano abridged the Rif in a Sefer called Alfasi Zuta. Alfasi Zuta. The Ramah Mipano says, what uh, says Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz, Harav HaGodol HaKadosh VeHatohar Rabbeinu Menachem Azaria. The great, holy, pure Rabbi Menachem Azaria, the author of Asara Mamorois, you know what he is? Quoting the Pasuk in Koheles, he's a Chacham Yoidea Peshar Davar. You know what that means? A wise man always makes compromise. One extreme view is this way. Another extreme view is that way. The wise man knows how to sort of take the, the opinions of both and, and fuse them together to form a, a reasonable approach. So the Ramami Pano says like this, do, do we say like the Rivash that Sekseka has to be Mishapeches or do we say like the Marit that it doesn't? The Ramami Pano says as follows, that if both sfeikos, there's really no reason to clare, to say one suffix before the other, then in fact, then the sex sfeikah needs to be able to be misapeches. In other words, if reasonably, there's no reason to analyze one suffix before the other, and each one reasonably you could look at first, then taka, you need to be able to say it both ways. But if there's a logic that, you know what, it's more lo- reasonable to clare one shaila before the other, then even if the Svek Svek is not Mishapeches, it's okay. Because anyway, it's not reasonable to take it from that side. It's not reasonable to start in that, in that way. That's the opinion of the Ramami Pan. I only bring this in just to see the language of Rav Yonis and Ibishitz. He calls the Ramami Pano the Rav HaGadol HaKadosh VeHatahar. Rav Yaakov Emden. Rav Yaakov Emden wrote Chuvais, Simen Lamed Gimel. Rav Yaakov Emden was not one to mince words. He was not he was not one to offer free compliments. If there was any minute deviation in somebody, he'll let you know. Rabbi Yaakov Emden speaks about the Ramah Mitano, Mipano in unbelievably glowing terms. And the same way Rabbi Yonis and Ibishitz compliments Ramah Mipano that he was able to always to make a pshara between the different views of the Chachamim, Rabbi Yaakov Emden in a completely different subject, he's discussing the death of Moshe Rabbeinu. There are all kinds of controversies about the death of Moshe Rabbeinu because on the one hand we know he died mincha time on Shabbos. On the other hand, Chazal say he wrote many Sifrei Torah on the day of his Misa. Well, if it was Shabbos, how could he possibly have written Sifrei Torah? There are many different views. The Ramami Pano also says Rabbi Yaakov Emdin on the second line. Ramami Pano, Chachmas Aleikim Bekirba, he had the wisdom of God. Lasso Mishba, to make judgment. What is the judgment? Zu Pshara he would always find the compromised view. His words, his words are so sweet to my palate. He would say and he would be able to fuse together all the various views. Says of Yaakov Emden, You ever hear, you know, you say about different people, he was the king, he was the king, right? Well, the real king, the king of Kabbalah, says of Yaakov Emden, was the Ramami Pano. He says, Mi b'chol beis ha-zoyhar kamayu. Who? Who had a mastery of the Zoyar like him? We accept his words. He says his words are tzadku yachdav. Ein bohem niftov ikesh. There's nothing crooked about it. There's no straw. There's no refuse. There's no kash. It's soyles nakia menufa bigamonafais. It is cleansed and purified and sifted flour. And then the Rabbi Yaakov Emden ends off, the Yalide Ime Karama Taled. He gives a brach, any woman who gives birth should give birth the likes of someone like the Ramami Pana. So just let me tell you a little bit more about um, the background of the Ramami Pano so that you realize that one, one observation we're going to make, how startling it, it actually is. Well, um, if there's one thing you've been learning over the last couple of weeks is that if you, ever, if you want to know any information about a God of Yisrael, where do you look? The Chida, in which Sefer? 
in the Shem Haggadah. Right? The Chida wrote a work of bibliographic wonder. The writes the Chida. The Chida writes about the Ramami Pano. That the Ramami Pano, by the way, in what Kufa did he live? During what era did he live? He lived during the era of the Beis Yosef. Maran Bet Yosef. He lived in the era of the Beis Yosef. And as we're going to see, amazing thing, here the Beis Yosef is li- living in Eretz Yisrael. The printing press had not made its way to Eretz Yisrael yet. All the print, the, uh, the, 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 the source of all printing in the world, the hub of printing in the world was Italy. The, the Beis Yosef sent the folios of the Kesef Mishnah he entrusted it to the Ramami Pano, who, by the way, Ramami Pano was a very wealthy man. Ramami Pano had a big Yerusha. He lived in a giant palace. However, he did not spend time in any room in that house other than a shack, broken down room, which that is where he spent his entire life. So he lived in great pomp and ceremony, but he didn't actually live in it. Very unusual. He had one room, like a shack, like a cave, he spent his whole life in there. In fact, we have a tradition that's brought down the Sefer Rugas HaBoisem that the Ramami Pano, he would contemplate and meditate and he had a real fear that his neshama would go up to Shamayim. So he told the Shamish every day to come knock on the door to sort of, you know, get him to snap out of it so he wouldn't leave this world. And there was a fire, the Shamish was late and he came back and the Ramami Pano was no longer. So he died, you know, Misas Nashika. So he died, he, he lived in the era of the Beis Yosef. And the Chidah brings down, he heard from Mahari Lombruzi. So the Mahari Lombruzi was present and he overheard that the Ramami Pan was learning with the Magid. Okay, so the Ramami Pan had a, had a Malach who came, who came to learn with him. The Ramami Pan wrote many, many Sfarim. I'll just name a, a couple. Many of them are small Kuntresim. So he wrote something called Asara Mamorais. He wrote something called Aim Kol Chai. In fact, Maimer Chikor Hadin, the Shach on Yeridea actually quotes Ramami Pano, Maimer Aim Kol Chai. He wrote a sefer called Maimer Ho'itim. Right? If you look in Koheles, in Koheles it talks about the different Zmanim, right? Eis Lehoi, Eis Lesnoi, Eis. The different Zmanim, 28 Zmanim. The Ramami Pano wrote Mamorim on all these various Zmanim. He wrote something called Maimer Tzivas Hashem. He wrote many, many Svarim. He wrote a sefer, Yemin Hashem Roi Meima about the correct way to be makif, the bima, with the lulav and esrag. And that was a very controversial work. There was someone in the name of Mahari Samiga, who wrote a contrary sefer. The name of that sefer was Darach Yemin. Ramami Pan. You know, the Chsam Soifer refers to him as Avi HaMekubalim. You know, the father of all Mekubalim. I want to tell you one more amazing thing. The Ramami Pano began his career learning one style of Kabbalah and he ended off learning a different style. If you remember back to Lagba Omer, does anybody remember who is the Rebbe of the Ramami Pano? Rabbi Yisrael Saruk. Rabbi Yisrael Saruk was the direct Talmud of the Arizal. And we, we explain how is that possible? How, how is that? The, the Arizal warned very sternly that nobody could disseminate his Kabbalah other than Rav Chaim Bital. And here the Ramami Pano is learning from Rabbi Sol Saruk. So we learned that Rabbi Sol Saruk actually preceded Rabbi Chaim Bital to learn from that Arizal. So he was sort of grandfathered in before the admonition of the, uh, of the Ari. The Ramak is considered a lower level of Kabbalah than the Kabbalah of Arizal. In fact, the, the Goyen, the Vilna Goyen says like this. Vilna Goyen says, where philosophy ends, Kabbalah begins. Where the Kabbalah of the Ramak ends, the Kabbalah of the Arizal begins. In fact, the Ramak from the Oilam Ha'emes, I, I believe he said that in Shemayim both Kabbalahs are true, but, in, but they learn Al the Kabbalah of the Arizal and Shemayim. Be it as it may, the Ramami Pano did not have exposure to either brand of Kabbalah. He heard there was a great Sadiq in Eretz Yisrael by the name of Ramak, Ramosha Cordovero, and the Ramosha Cordovero actually sent the um, Rama, uh, sent the Ramami Pano many of his svarim, many of his svarim. So that, that was the first exposure the Ramami Pano had to the svarim of Ramosha Cordovero. He sent him uh, specifically. He sent him specifically some of the ksavim of uh, the, uh, the Ramak, but the Chida brings down a very detailed report, and that is. 
that Rav Immanuel, now, now well, who's Rav Immanuel? Who's a Rav Immanuel Mipano? Who's Rav Immanuel Mipano? The answer is that was his English name, not his his secular name. The it's Menachem in uh, Italian is Mani Immanuel. His his Italian name was Manuel. So th- it was recorded as follows. The the greatest work of the Ramak is called Or Yakar. Or Yakar is a sixteen volume major. Each work is a major edition. 16 volumes on the Zohar, the Raya Mehemna, all the Idrois. Well, when the Ramak died, the Ramami Pano was chalashing to get a hold of these manuscripts. So he needed to bribe to get the manuscripts. He didn't want to buy them. Who would, the Almana would never give it up. He sent a thousand dukats <coughs> to Eretz Yisrael, to the Almana, just for her to release the manuscripts for him to borrow and copy over. Apparently, she wasn't willing to release it. So the Ramami Pan had to pay off some of the Gedolim of the time to intercede on his behalf. So we actually have a record. She paid 20 golden coins to Rav Yosef Karoy, the, the Mechaber, to convince the Amona of the Ramak to give up the manuscripts. She had to pay off the al 10 golden coins. Somebody asked me, why, why, why did the Beis Yosef charge more? First, I don't know, maybe, you know, he, he was the Malach didn't let him, you know, he was in charge of... But all, you know, different speakers charge different amounts. I don't know, you know. That's anyway. We have a detailed account how much money the Ramami Pan has sent different Gedolei Yisrael to intercede on his behalf. Okay, so here we're dealing with one of the all-time great Mikubalim, and the last thing in the world you would expect is to hear the following. Comes the Shas Chasam Chasam Soifer, and the Chasam Soifer was posed with the following question: Does a Jew? have to have a beard. After all, the Mikobalam write very clearly, Do not send forth your hand to the beard at all. And the Chsam Soifer in Pressburg, where you have to know in Pressburg, the Yidim were all shaving. <coughs> Contrary to what most people think, everybody was shaving over there. It was people shaved. No, not with a razor. But they had different ways. However they did it, by hook or by crook. Not by crook, more like by hook. They, 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 were, uh, they were clean shaven. And the Chsamsar was asked, what about the Kabbalah that says, don't touch the beard? So the Chsamsar, what do you want from me? Only Asik bin Astaris. Am I a Kabbalist? I have no business with uh, hidden mysteries. But, says the Chsamsar, I want you to know something. If you think that Alpi Kabbalah, you have to have a beard, you should know that obviously in Italy, they didn't care too much about this Kabbalah. She bechol Eretz Italia, kol chachameha megul chezakein. Every last rabbi in Italy was clean shaven. And you say, what? The Ramchal, Rabbi Shai Basson, this one, that one? You heard the man. Every last rabbi in Italy did not have a beard. How's that possible? Says so, some sort. Let me tell you, that's possible. The Nitlim be Elon Gadol Rav Menachem Azaria, and they blamed it on the great, ra- greatest Italian rabbi, the Ramami Panoi, Avi Amikubolim, the chief Kabbalist, Shehu Hayom Megaleach Mebli Hisher Asara Echad. You know how well he shaved. He didn't even miss one hair. He's not like the guy who shaves and has like those two hairs sticking out over here. He did not even miss one hair. Says I'm sorry for it. How do I know? The Hayashar mi Kandaya. The great philosopher, the Yashar from Kandaya, testified in his Sefer Elim. And he would say as follows that Al Pi Kabola. In Chutz Loretz, you should not have a beard. <coughs> Sounds good, huh? You hear this? The Chsam Soifer is quoting the Yashar Mikandaya, who, by the way, the Chida writes, was a great philosopher, was a great Chacham, was, was well knowledgeable in every discipline, in analytics, in Rafua, in medicine, in, in every type of discipline. He was a great speaker. He wrote many works. He wrote a Sefer Elim, by the way, 
he also wrote a work against Kabbalah, which the Ramaz disproved. Now, I just want to remind you. Anybody remember who's the Ramaz? Rav Moshe Zakuta. Now, if you go to Mantoba today, there's a big army base which stands on the cemetery in Mantoba. And on the outside of the army base, there's a sign. Here is buried Ramami Pano and Ramosha Zakuto. Who's Ramosha Zakuto? Let me just remind you. The Ramchal's Rebbe, who remembers? Who's Ramchal's Rebbe? Rabbi Shaya Basson. Very good, Ruvain. Rabbi Shaya Basson. And who's Rabbi Shaya Basson's Rebbe? Ramosha Zakuto. Rabbi Shaya Basson's father in law is Rabbi Yamin Cohen. Rav Moshe Zakuto's Rebbe was Rav Azariah Figo. Rav Azariah Figo's Rebbe was Rav Yehuda Arya of Modina, who we spoke about. So if you want to know the chain, Rav Yehuda Arya of Modina, Rav Azariah Figo, Rav Moshe Zakuto, Rav Yishai Basson, Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzan. And they all cannot be more different one from the next. They all have no beard. And according to the Chsam Soifer, they all had a very smooth face. Well, says the Chsam Soifer, Al Pi Kabbalah, he quotes, you shouldn't have a beard in Chutz Aratz. So therefore, Chsam Soifer explains, let me tell you something. Where did it come from that nowadays so many Jews don't have beards? After all, in the Midbar, one thing I could assure you, they all had beards. And when they entered Eretz Yisrael, they all had beards. And then when they went down to Babel, they all had beards. And when they came back to Eretz Yisrael, they still had their beards. When did it happen that Jews stopped wearing the beard? Well, says the Chassam Surfer, let me tell you how it happened. It happened in the year Tatnu. Okay, remember that for Tisha B'Av. Tatnu is the year... Taf, Taf, Nun Vav. Taf, Taf, Nun Vav is the year 1096, the year of the Crusades. Gezeras Tatnu is a reference in, in, in uh, literature, in, in uh, literature of Shal Tshuvos or, or of Old Sfarim, where the reference to the Crusades are the Gezeras Tatnu. During the, the Gezeras Tatnu, the Jews were on the run. Now, you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. If every, if every guy is, you know, smooth face, you know, lift and cut, and the, the, the Jew has a langa bard, the guy's going to say, No! Right, he can take off his yarmulke. Say, Rabbi, you're a dead man. Me? Uh, who, who are you talking about? I, I mean, not, mean not the Yiddelah. Not. So they had a shave to, uh, to disguise themselves. <coughs> now, the course asked the Chassam Soifer, but why did Goyim not have beards? Like, going back in the day, even Goyim had beards. Says the Chassam Soifer, now I don't get this exact cheshman, but he says what happened was, in Poland... There was a king. The king was impotent. Couldn't, couldn't have children. Couldn't produce hair. So he was clean-shaven. And as not to embarrass this king, the Goyim all began to shave. That's where it came from. Had this guy been a real man, all Goyim would look like, you know... In Poland? In Poland, yeah. But it all started uh, from this Polish king who was not able to produce hair. Actually, the Chassam Soifer um, in Parshas Vazchanan quotes this from a great historian, with, uh, the Tzemach David, with David Ganz, who was the Talmud of the Ramah. In any event, in order to uh, masquerade as a guy, it became Jewish custom to uh, shave the beard, says the Chassam Soifer, except for the rabbis. The rabbis, anyway, they would sit in the house all day, so they didn't have to hide themselves. But every other Yid... Says the Sam Sefer, we're going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. The Chachamim were matter yidin to remove their beards. That's a fact. Says the Sam Sefer, sir, if you're going to say that not having a beard is even a small chait, chas v'shalim, to say such a thing. Says the Sam Sefer, anyone who says that there's any avero whatsoever not to have a beard, Asid litein hadin, God will take them to task. Some servers has very harsh words about people who overemphasize the importance of, of the beard. In other words, you want to have a beard? No problem. You want to look more like uh, the old time Jews? Gavaldic, wonderful. But you're going to tell somebody, you know, 
you're not a good enough Jew because you don't have a beard, says Chsam Soifer, Asid Litein Es Hadin. Chsam Soifer? Oh boy, did he have a beard. Of course he had a beard. No question. All the Rabbanim in Europe had a beard, except for Italy. Italy was different. Italy was more a Renaissance country. It was more advanced. Many of the G'daylam there went to university. Almost all the G'daylam there went to university. Padua, almost many of them were physicians. Many of them were Karev Lamalchos. So they had to, uh, for example, if I'm not mistaken, one of the, the, the head of the Agudas Yisrael of the last generation, uh, you know, also uh, I believe Rav Aaron Cutler told him not to have a beard. He's, you know, he's among the... Uh, um, high-ranking officials, presidents, he mixes in, in high company, it wouldn't, it would be uh, uncomfortable, it would not be dignified. You know, in the Gentile world, uh, a beer today is considered messy, is con- you know, for, for right or for wrong. So, there was another Italian gadol by the name of Rav Shamshin Morporgo. He was the Rav of Ancona. Rav Shamshin Morporgo was asked the following question. Many Italian Jews made their way to Salonika. Where's Salonika? In Greece. In Greece, they were very from. In Greece, the rabbis wanted to be geyser, that anybody who doesn't have a, j- a beard either shall leave our country, or we we'll put them in cherem, or we declare that they're no longer Jewish. Uh, they really held the beards over there. You hear this? In Salonika... They made a, the Rabbanim got together to, to try to enforce. They didn't like the fact that who these Italian Yidin were coming in and they, they look modern. They don't look like uh, Jews. And Rav Shamshim Purgo was asked to comment on whether the Chachamim Salonika have the right to do this. And he said, Of course not. They don't have the right to do this. Could somebody please show me where in the Chumish or the Shas does it say that you have to have a beard? It doesn't say it anywhere. It, all we know is it's a Mishnah Makos. The Mishnah says you can't shave with a razor, but if you shave with a, uh, uh, you could shave with the scissors. You could cut your beard with scissors. So therefore, he was not for this ban in in Salonika. Well, where did the Chassam Sofer get this from? First of all, Chassam Sofer is saying that the Rabbanim in Italy did not have beards. He's saying that the, the reason they don't have beards is they blame it on the Ramami Pano. In other words, they're following the example of the Ramami Pano. And where does Chassam Soifer get this from? So we have a very unusual tshuva. Please look at number 10. Shailas Uchuvas Be'er Eisek. Shailas Uchuvas Be'er Eisek was written by Rabbeinu Moshe Shapsi Be'er. And he was asked by one of his Talmidim, based on the Zayar, the Zayar says on the Pasuk, Amzu Yatsar Tali, What's the gematria of Zu? Zu is 13. And there's a concept, Alpi Kabbalah, that the beard represents the Yud Gimel Shvilin, the 13 pathways corresponding to Yud Gimel Midas HaRachamim. And that somehow if you cut off the beard, you're removing all the Rachamim Shamayim. On the other hand, the hair of the head represents Midas Hadin. And therefore it's recommended that you remove the hair of the head. Why? This way you remove the hair of the head, you remove Midas Adin, and you grow the hair of the beard, you get Midas Harachamim. Obviously the Hasidim take this uh, very literally and they emphasize this, the concept of the importance of the beard and the, the importance of lack of hair of the head. And he was asked the following, Shaila, this Zohar that says you should remove the hair of your head, are you allowed to do it with the scissors? Or maybe you have to use a razor. And the Be'er Asek says, you know, I'm so proud to have such Talmidim who understand the concept and the value of growing the beard and removing the hair of the head. Very proud of my Talmidim. And he throws out this whopper of an idea that in Chutz La'aretz, where you have the Tumas Ha'amim and you have the impurity of the nations, Maybe, maybe, maybe you need to remove the beard. Maybe Chutz Laaretz is not roy for a beard. Maybe Chutz Laaretz, it's better not to have a beard. And then he says the following. If you look at number 10, one, two, three, four, six lines from the bottom. Ve'avoy nafshi darashti v'chakarti heitev hadek. I personally investigated very well. Heich hinhug harama mipanoi 
I personally wanted to investigate what was the custom of the Ramami Pano. Like, what did he do on Arab Shabbos? How did he get re- ready for Shabbos? The Adati al Nachain, and I know very surely. Ki kol Arab Shabbos have a chayif reishay. Every Arab Shabbos he would shampoo his head, not his hair. You know why? The kireach hava. He didn't have hair. He was bald. Umistaper bedikne kimen hago Italia, and he shaved his beard like the Italian minag. And if the Ramami Pano, who nobody knew Kabbalah and the Kisei Ari, like the Ramami Pano had a tradition from Rabbi Sol Saruk, if he shaved his beard, then that is just a clear proof to my concept that even though a beard al is very important, but not in Chutzaretz, a beard is not fit for Chutzaretz. Ad kan divrei shayla sechubas be'er esek. So, Marv Rabbi I would like to share with you Maybe my favorite tshuva. Okay? And I don't say that lightly. Shaila Sutshuva's Divrei Yosef. Who wrote the Shaila Sutshuva's Divrei Yosef? Rav Yosef Irgaz. Rav Yosef Irgaz was a Talmud of Rav Binyamin Cohen. Rav Binyamin Cohen, who's Rav Binyamin Cohen? The father in law of Rav Yishaya Basson. Who's Rav Yishaya Basson? The Rabbi of the Ramchal. Rabbi Binyamin Cohen is the father-in-law of Rabbi Shai Basson. He's the Rebbe of Rabbi Yosef Irgaz. Rabbi Yosef Irgaz was one of the chief loichemim, warriors against Nehemiah Chiyun and Shabtai Tzvi. And he was very on guard against false Kabbalists. And very on guard about people who would jump into Kabbalah without knowing Shas and Poiskim. Well, he heard about this tshuva of Shas and Tshuva's Be'er Isak, who suggests that in Chutzaretz, it's better not to have a beard. The Haraya, the greatest Makubal of all, the Ramami Pano, did not have a beard. Says Rabbi Yosef Irgaz. The words of the Shasachus Be'er Esek is Pitpute Devarim in Bohemamish. It's just chatter. In other words, it's nonsense what the man is spewing. Every word that he says is complete nonsense. Let me tell you something. He himself agreed, he himself agreed that, he, that he's not familiar with Kabbalah. So it says, guys, if the Barisic is not familiar with Kabbalah, then where in the world does he come off starting to come up with novelties in Kabbalah? You know what? The Zayar was only talking about Eretz Yisrael, but in Chutz Laaretz, it's not really applicable. It's better not to have a beard. If you don't know the fundamental concept of why a beard is important, then how could you start making differentiations what country you live in? But it says of Yosef here, guys, let me tell you my main problem over here. Let me tell you something. If the Mekubalim say you should not remove your beard, even with scissors, which they do say, Let's not mince words. The Zayar says, don't touch your beard. Are they arguing with the Gemara? The Gemara says, you're not to use a razor, but you can use scissors. So just one simple question. Are the Mikubalim arguing with the Gemara? The Gemara says, don't, the, the Mikubalim say, don't touch your beard. And the, and the Mishnah says, you could use scissors. Is there a Machlaikis over here? Not at all. Chas v'sholem, the Mikubalim would never argue on the Gemara. It says the Rabbi Yosef Yerga is one of the most startling things. Anybody who says that if you cut your beard with scissors, you're over a lav in the Torah, is a kaifer b'tayra. Is no longer a Jew. Anyone who has the audacity to say, yeah, the Mishnah says you're allowed to, but the Kabbalah says you're not allowed to, and you get an Avera of Baal Tashkas, if you cut your beard, is a koifer. Because if you don't believe that Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu and Har Sinai, that you can use a razor, but you could use scissors, then I don't care what, whether your pretext is feigned righteousness, you're a koifer in, in, in the Torah. You're no longer a Jew. You pick up my bottle of wine, I can't drink it anymore. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu you could use a pair of scissors on your beard. So what do the Mekubala mean? Let me explain something, says Rabbi Yosef Irgaz. There's something called Nigla, and there's something called Nistar. Nigla is Shas and Poiskim. Who has to keep Shas and Poiskim? 
every single Jew. We all keep what it says in the Gemara and the Mishnah Bura. Finished. But the Kabbalah are only for Yechidei Segula. Kabbalah are four great individuals who are in a very high madrega. They could keep saintly practices with Kadesh Yamar But nobody would say that someone who violates what it says in the Zayar is an Avaryan. Chas v'shalom. Let me explain something, says Rabbi Yosef Ayer, guys. My whole life I'm in terrible pain. How you have some people, they jump into Kabbalah and they make believe they're, they're big Mikubalim. Yeah, what do they do? They open up some svarim. They open up this sefer, that sefer, and they start talking. Yeah, partsufim, sfirois, zacher nekeva, abba ima, rachaleya. Skayach, rachaleya. I, I also just said it. They don't know what they're talking about. It's like reading a Chinese newspaper. Says Rabbi Yosef guys, you know what we call this? Kishkish, estira, belagina, kishkish karya. You know what that means? You have a pushka. It's packed to the gills. You shake it, it makes no noise. So too. You have somebody who knows halacha, someone who knows gemara. You don't hear much from him. You know why? Because he has it. He doesn't have to make noise. It's the person who knows like one or two, like you know, what was it called? Like uh, sound bites from the Zayar and from the Ariza. All of a sudden, you know, he's constantly spewing forth. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know anything. And sometimes people take it so far, they think they know, and they say, oh, the Zayar says like A over here, he says B over here, so they want to be Mechadesh C. And they're, they're Mechadesh things which are connected the Torah. Then the Rabbi Yosef Ergas says, even this concept that in Chutz La'aretz, you should have a beard, you should not have a beard. And Eretz says, oh, you should have a beard? doesn't make any sense. What's the difference? Do you, do you sit in a sukkah in Chutzaretz? Do you wear tefillin in Chutzaretz? Why would a beard be any different? If anything, if there's more tumah in Chutzaretz, if anything, you should have the beard in Chutzaretz. Come to Eretz Yisrael and have a smooth face. Why would it be the opposite? But this is where, this is my favorite part. But now it says, Rabbi Yosef guys, he completely rips apart the testimony of the Be'er Eisek. Listen very carefully. Says Rabbi Yosef Irgaz, with all due respect, Mr. Be'er Eisek, Rabbi Be'er Eisek, you claim that you investigated the Ramami Pano's personal hygiene on Erev Shabbos, and you were told that he's using, you know, uh, uh, an Orelko that the guy in the buzz on Coney Island took, that, took out, the, he, he dulled the blade? That's what he was doing? It's a Masa Listar. Your testimony is testimony against yourself. Listen carefully to what you say. You said that you heard that the Ramami Pano was Mestaper Bidikne in his beard. Why didn't whoever tell you, whoever told you this say he was Mestaper Dikne? He shaved his beard. Why did he say he shaved in his beard? You know why? Because he didn't remove his beard. He had a Lifesha beard. You know what a Lifesha beard? Where I come from in Yeshiva Chavetz Chaim. Lifesha beard is... You have a nice, neat line over here. And you have a nice, neat line over here. And it's trimmed over here. He doesn't have a chassidah. He trimmed his beard. That's what it means. Mestaper bidikne. So you claim he shaved off his beard. Listen to the words that you heard. Mestaper bidikne. That's number one. Number two. I spoke to my Rebbe. Who is his Rebbe? Rabbi Yom and Cohen. And Rabbi Yaman Khan, my Rabbi, told me that the Be'er Eisek is not a reliable Sefer. Can't rely on it. And then my Rabbi told me the following. Okay, I'm going to give this out. Don't look at it yet, okay? You can have it, but if, on condition you don't look at it. You think you can handle that? I'll let you know when you can look at it. Keep it down, keep it down. Don't open it, don't turn around. Well, Rabbi Yon, Rabbi Yamin Cohen. <laughs> no, other way, the other way. Rabbi Yamin Cohen told me that he was in Mantoba and he saw a picture of the Ramami Pano. Turn it over, turn it over. Looks like a beard to me. 
The Ramami Pano in the picture in Mantoba, he certainly had a beard. Not only that, it was mole, it was a flowing beard. And then the Divra Yosef says one of the most important things you will have. What? Then the, 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 the Divra Yosef says one of the most important things. The Divra Yosef says like this. If you would have told me that the Ramami Pano gave a shear, and when somebody asked him about beards, the Ramami Pano said that I'll pick Habola, you shouldn't have a beard in Chutzaretz. Then I would say like this. He said it? If he said it, then it must be true. Then I would have said, I don't believe an Adam Gada would have made such a unusual statement. That's if he would have said. In other words, if the Ramam Mipana would have got up in Shul and said, I feel that in Chutz Aras you shouldn't have a beard, then my reaction, says Abiyah Sevier Gaz, would have been, I would have said, if he said it, then it must be true, but I don't believe he said such a thing. The same way that Rabbi Leo Mizrahi, when he heard that Rabbi Tam said something that he didn't understand, he said, I don't believe Rabbi Tam would ever say something again. But you're not saying that the Ramam Mipana said it. You're telling me that you investigated and you were told that the Ramana Mipano shaved. What is that called? Hearsay. No pun intended. That's called, right? That's called hearsay. Hearsay information is worthless. I heard that a certain God all did this. Whippy do. I don't care. It's meaningless. Hearsay information has no meaning in Tyra. Ain lemaidin halacha mipi maisa. We do not learn halacha from stories. People tell you, hey, why do you do this? One time I saw a god of Yisrael do this. First of all, I tell the guy, you sure you saw? Or somebody told it to you and you convinced yourself that you saw it. Were you drunk? Were you sick? Were you hallucinating? Were you smoking at the time? Were you, was that a good moment for you? Were you up? Were you dreaming? Maybe you forgot, maybe you read it and now you think you saw it. A story in halacha has no value. I saw it once upon a time. I'll tell you a bigger chiddush. This is a very important thing. The Gemara in Hariya says, if you go to a shir and the rabbi in a shir says, this is the halacha, and you rely on it, and the rabbi was wrong, you are not a shoygig, you're a mezid. A shir is not halacha lamaisa. Just because, let's say, somebody gives a shir about fishing, the rabbi says, don't do it. It's not a lachla ma'isa. It's a shir. We're learning a topic. It's not a lachla ma'isa. No shir is halachla ma'isa. From anybody. I don't care who you hear from. Any god o hadar. You do not rely on... More than that. You're waiting online. And you hear somebody ask the Rav. You know, I was just wondering, what would the halacha be? And the Rav says, mutter. Can't rely on it. Because you told him you are just wondering. So he, he also just... He threw out what he thought at the, thought at the time. He's not required... To, to make sure he does his complete do The only time you could rely on something, you tell her, Rav, I have a Shiloh that's Nagea, me right now, what should I do? You ask her, theoretically, what would be? You know, that's why many of the Swarm that are written today, you know, are questions somebody asked the Godot while they were walking. It's very interesting, but it doesn't carry the weight of Halach Lamaisa. You can't rely on it. It means something, but... It, Says Rabbi Yosef Ergaz, you heard that the Ramah Mipano? Who cares? We don't rely on stories. Maybe the guy who saw, saw wrong. Maybe he said it over wrong. He said another thing. Maybe the Ramah Mipano was sick. And he had a disease. And that's why he had to shave his beard. But if you would ask him what to do, you would say, Avada, you have to have a beard. You can never bring a raya, oh, I saw this God all doing this. Maybe he had uh, mitigating circumstances, extenuating circumstances. You can only rely. You ask, I want to know what should I do? And he tells you what to do. Certainly, a shear is a, a good indication, a good starting point. But if you have a serious question, you don't say, hmm, what should I do? Let me check up on Torah anytime if somebody has a good shear on the subject. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Torah anytime. But if you, you look at the Mishnah Bura, you have to ask a Shaila. But uh, uh, these type of anecdotal, anecdotal evidence is only anecdotal evidence. 
And therefore, it says Rabbi Yosef, here, guys, there's no way in a million years that Mami Pano did not have a beard. It's just not possible. We have a picture. I spoke to my Rebbe. My Rebbe said that the Barius is not reliable. He himself didn't say the Ramami Pano shaved it. He shaved in it. But interestingly, the Chassam Soifer does quote that uh, the Italian G'daylem did not have beards, which is certainly true. Most Italian G'daylem did not have beards. We, we do know whether the Ramami Pano had a beard or not. Many G'daylem we know, Rav Shamsin and Porgo, and others were clean-shaven. And they were very great tzaddikim, and they were great, very great chassidim, and they were very great kadoshim, and there was nothing lacking in their Avodah Hashem. Well, comes the Minchas Elazar, and if you know the Minchas Elazar, Munkach, the concept that the Ramah Mipano did not have a beard did not sit well with him. Even though the Minchas Elazar would be the last to ever disagree with the Chassam Soifer, but this is where he draws the line. Sam Soifer says that the Ramami Pano didn't have a beard. So the Minchas Olazar says like this. The Minchas Olazar says that the Sam Soifer, who does he quote that says the Ramami Pano didn't have a beard? Sam Soifer didn't quote Shasu Chivas Be'er Esek. He quoted Yashar Mikandaya in the Sefer Elam. Says the Minchas Olazar, I checked over there. He doesn't say the Ramami Pano didn't have a beard. It says that he didn't have a beard. Yashar Mikandaya didn't have a beard. And of course he didn't. He was a very... Um, he was very involved with the governors, with the officers. He was politically very active. And he couldn't have a beard. So where exactly did the Chassam Soifer get that the Ramayim didn't have a beard? He must have remembered it from the Be'er Eisek. And somehow there was a little bit of an error and it was attributed to the Yashar Mikandaya. Says the Minchas Elazar, the Chassam Soifer probably never saw the tshuva of Rav Yosef Ergaz. If he would have seen the tshuva of Rav Yosef Ergaz, that Rav Yosef Ergaz says the Beresek is not reliable, and that the whole testimony of Rami Pano is not that he shaved off his beard, but he shaved in his beard, and that Rabbi Yaman Kohn said that he saw a picture of Rami Pano and he had a beard, the Chassam Soifer would have been Choyzer. Now this is where the Minchas Elazar takes it to another level. And the Minchas Elazar writes his personal opinion is as follows. When the Mishnah and uh, the Mishnah, take a look at number 14 and we'll close with this. The Mishnah Masech Damakoi says that someone who cuts off the payas of his beard by the way I want to tell you a very important halacha. Halachically, but at the end of the day, you're allowed to use a scissor, and if you have an acceptable shaver, you can use an acceptable shaver. But most Shapaskins, you're allowed to use it. But you should know, that's the beard. The Peyus Harosh, even with the scissor, you can't cut them extremely close to the face. They have to be at least long enough, a certain length. Long enough to grab, long enough to bend over. Some people like to have a certain hairstyle. They like very sharp sideburns. So while a, a, a shaver, which is an acceptable shaver, Ramosha says his mutter on the face, you have to be careful in the area of the payas not to shave the sideburns too close. Where does this come from? How do we know you're allowed to use scissors on the face? It's a Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Enoi chayev, look at number 14, Ad sheyit lenu batar. You're not chayev until you shave it with a razor. What is that mashma? That was scissors, it's permitted. Well, the Minchas Salazar has a different way of reading the Mishnah. You're only chay of Malkus if you use a razor. But if you use scissors, you still get a lav of Loisashchis. And he quotes, there are many who say that, you should know. The Masri Rokeach says that. The Sefer Achinuch seems to say that. And the Minchas Salazar says that. According to the Minchas Salazar, <coughs> merely touching the beard is a problem. However, it don't really matter. Because the Beis Yosef says very clearly, we don't pass in that way. The Beis Yosef writes that we pass and you read the Mishnah, you can't use a razor, but you're allowed to use scissors. And therefore, we conclude as follows. You want to know, did the Ramami Pano have a beard? Chassam Soifer says no. 
In all likelihood, the Ramami Pano probably had a beer at something like this. Uh, there's, an, there's an article written in, 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 um, in the early 1900s, a journal called Ma'asef, where he brings that the tzaddik from Kamarna was in a museum in Wien and he saw another picture of Ramami Pano where he had a beard. So in all likelihood, Rabbi Yosef Irgaz, who had a tradition from his Rebbe, Rabbi Yaman Kohn, in all likelihood, it's very reasonable, Ramami Pano, unlike every other Italian gadol, he himself probably did. But halacha l'maysa, it's not really an issue. Despite, kvoidoy shalom inchas Allah zerbe makoy munach, and he's not the only one, but nevertheless, we have something called Shulchan Aruch. And the Beis Yosef writes that the reading of the Mishnah is that you don't know how to use a razor on the face, but scissors are mutter. And therefore our approach is like the Chassam Soifer. This we know for sure. That anybody who says there's an Avera to remove the hair of the face, Asad lite nasadin. That person's going to face the consequences. Why? Because we have a Messiah, we have Tar Shabbat Peh. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu on Har Sinai, according to the normative halacha, the Beis Yosef, it's permitted. Is there an Indian Alpi Kabbalah? Yes. But like the Rabbi Yosef Yerga says, the Kabbalah is for Yechide Segula. But for somebody to say to somebody else, you have a Chiyuv, or it's an Avera, or it's a Chet Kal, or it's a small Chet, not a small Chet. Says the Chassam um, Soifer, he writes the following words. The custom of Klal Yisrael going back to the Xeris of Tatnu is not mi makar moshchos. It's not from a corrupt source. Rechsam Sofer says, B'kedoisham Yisera. It has holiness as well. And therefore, there have been many great people throughout our history who were tzaddikim, who were chasidim, and the fact that they didn't have a beard did not diminish from their godless. But, Alpi Kabbalah, there is such a concept. And um, so now we're in the three weeks where, where the Minog is, at least uh, now, starting uh, tomorrow for sure, Minog Ashkenaz, and certainly Shavu Shachal by Tishabav, and one should try their best during the week of Tishabav itself. This year it's not clear whether there is a Shavu Shachal by Tishabav because it's pushed off to Sunday. But um, if you do end up having, you know, the hair, so at least one week a year, or three weeks a year, you mekayim this Indian. But uh, where I come from, uh, the chitzonios and the external trappings, as we say, are always helpful, but the, uh, not to let a person get carried away with it. Because the ikar is, like the Rabbi Yosef Yergaz writes, the ikar is the halacha, the gemara, the paiskim, which is incumbent upon every Jew. And above and beyond that, that's for Yechide Skula, the Kadosh Yamalite. Have a wonderful evening. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.